your colleagues in the press, um, Martin and Sean, were, well, they had plenty to say about this. The headlines from this, mor this morning's newspapers, moment of genius, Mo, of course, capitalised. Klopp says uh, Mohamed Salah's goal will still be talked about in 50 years. Uh, that was on the front of the game pullout in the Times. Goal for the ages, Klopp held Salah's special striper Guardiola fumes over Milner, as you heard there uh, in that uh, little uh, package about the game. That was Andy Hunter in The Guardian. Pierre Lasala lights up classic before City D deep to share the spoils by Jason Burt in The Telegraph. Um, Dave Maddock in the Daily Mirror said that spit and stardust was his headline. He's because Pep calls for action for as an absolute classic is marred by accusations of a fan spitting at the City bench. Um, that was uh, uh, further brought up on the back page of The Sun. Uh, spitting City fan gobbled on our bench, spitting mad, actually. Uh, Pep's fury at Milner let off. He was actually with the son there going for both uh, the sort of uh, uh, incidents that uh, didn't mar, but also took part in what was a great game of football. First of all, I'll say, uh, Martin, we do occasionally have to remind ourselves why we all love this game. And of course, I like a nil-nil slog in League Two just as much as a, as a great game because uh, there's always something to see in football. But that was approaching a great game wasn't it yeah that was it was an exceptional game of football i mean the second half you won't probably won't see a better second half of football better four to five minutes of football than that all all season and 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 the fact that um the two teams go about their business in such different ways and and you keep coming back to the fact that manchester united uh, sorry manchester city um, I know they've got Gabriel uh, Jesus and uh, he is a striker, but they, they haven't got the talent uh, that Liverpool have got up front uh, and they try to get to goal in a, in a different way, City. And the contrast of styles was, was fascinating. That, that, that thing that, that Liverpool can do that, uh, for the first goal, say, when Salah breaks... And they've got Jota going one way, they've got Mane going the other, and and and, and City haven't got that. They haven't got these three, uh, these, these trump of of strikers that are flying at your goal all all of a sudden. And yet, they got back into the game twice. And yet, in the first half, they were the better team and and, and could easily have scored. Guardiola certainly had a point about uh, Milner staying on. It was it was a it was a it was a miracle of referee him really that uh, he managed to stay on the pitch. I mean, um, God knows what 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 game Paul Turney was watching because it certainly wasn't the one that just about everybody else was seeing, including Jurgen Klopp. Bearing in mind that he took James Milner off with about a minute of the the, the second yellow card that should have been. Um, it was it was a fabulous game. It had it had absolutely everything, and they're two outstanding teams. I mean, I think Chelsea were in the mix as well. I think Manchester United are almost possibly a bit too flaky, but but certainly those two teams plus Chelsea. You look at that and think. I know we say it every season, and then you look around and some teams ten points clear or something like that. But you do mm -hmm. think there could be a, a, a wonderful title race, a wonderful three-way title race this season. You know, well, be, those three teams, have, those, two, those three teams you mentioned, certainly. Chelsea, Manchester City, and Liverpool, they have laid they have laid down their markers, and we'll know more about Manchester United very soon, won't we? Their mm. next seven Premier League games. Um, are all against teams who would expect... I think they're all against teams who would expect to finish in the top half. Um, so if they come through and they're still in contention, then you can say they're a real yeah. team. We'll talk more about United. Martin United's appears to have written them off, though, in the title race. You've just, you just put it down to three already. I yeah, four. I, I don't know. I say, oh, my, look, I think Manchester United, I, I think they should be in there. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Cristiano Ronaldo, and I think any team that's got Ronaldo in it is in the game. I mean, he's always in the game, and, and whether, whether that's the 90-minute game or whether that's the 38-game game, game they're, they're always in the game. But they're so flaky. You can I, I just keep looking at them and thinking, you can't keep winning in the last minute. You can't keep winning because someone does something brilliant. And I know Salah did something brilliant for, for Liverpool at the weekend, and I know um, Manchester, you know, what, De Bruyne has shot for the for the last equaliser. So you know, there's a lot of brilliant stuff going on, but United, it, it just seems a little bit too off the cuff to me. It was interesting as well, Dan, wasn't it? In the in the pre-match that both Guardiola and Klopp now consider this to be the the number one game now 
in English football. Mm. You know, for a while you think about the rivalry between Liverpool mm-hmm. and Man United, the fact Chelsea are the European champions as well, but they both seem to consider this was their biggest test. And it looked like both thought it was their biggest test as well. I mean, it had a, a sort of feeling, an atmosphere, a, a, I don't know, a fizz to yeah, it. No, I, like, I, like I no other game, saying. really. I mean, I mean, the, the, the proximity of the two teams to each other does lend it a Liverpool-Manchester United flavour from not so very long ago. And I suspect that if uh, Manchester City uh, hadn't won at Chelsea, they might be, be keeping their, their, their neck in a little bit more. Um, mm. it, it, they can't, it can't be... Um, I mean, we, we, did, we saw it with Manchester United and Arsenal. It can be a 250-mile apart if that's the distance, I don't know the exact distance, rivalry, um, it is much more likely to be intense between teams that are geographically proximitous. Um, I'm glad to use the word proximitous this early in the morning uh, or in the evening in, in talk sport. But yes, I get it. But actually, I thought when I saw those comments, I thought they're saying this because, you know, they're being asked about this game. But Chelsea are very much in, in this race as well. And, um, and at the risk of being, I mean, I'm already got to eat one hat, haven't I, um, before the end of the season. We worked this out, haven't we, Sean, last week? Um, I'll, I will, I, 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 after seven more of these games from Manchester United, I suspect that Martin will be proven correct. Mm. Although, you know, as he says, they've got enough talent to make it happen. Had they overbought at the forward end of the team rather than the middle of the team is the question I'd be asking. Um, listen, we've got a lot more to say about this game, including, needless to say, because the commentators, I think it was about 18 minutes in before Harry Kane got a mention, um, as he does in, in every game of football these days on Sky, um, the number one agent for the sale of England centre forward, and closely followed by uh, you gentlemen of the press. 